Hi. Welcome to Chris BI. My name's Chris Wagner. I'm here with Dax, who's asking the question, what the heck is one of these Power BI data marts? Well, in this video, we're gonna dig into all of the great features and functionalities of what a Power BI data mart is. Why the heck are you gonna use it? Stay tuned. Digital Alliance is counting on you. Like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, turn on that alarm bell so you don't miss any future emission. Okay, so why should you be caring about a Power BI data mart, right? And that the, the why really depends upon who you are and why are you watching this video, right? So if you're an individual analyst who's out there working in, 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 working in Power BI, working with data, and you've run into a situation where you know, tabular engine's great, but you need you need some additional capabilities to, to manage, store data, write some queries against it. Power BI Data Marts is truly a self-service database as a service that you can just leverage as part of your Power BI subscription. So you can just start using it, you can run queries against it, and it's fully integrated, not just with Power BI, but with Excel, with all sorts of different services inside of the Microsoft Microsoft ecosystem. So it is just, it's amazing all the different things that it does. And it's, uh, you know, if you're on Power BI Premium, it's it's a free service. So it's, it's fantastic. Next, if you're on a team, Power BI Data Marks gives you the ability to work together as a team, to be able to manage a, a mart and information flowing in together, to be able to share those queries between team members so that you can you know, do your different validations, do your analysis, and have that all captured inside of one space so that you know, you're not losing any of the work that another team member did, or you've got a real nice place to go to get that information, get those queries and share them back and forth. Uh, with even some contextual content, it's it's fantastic. You can also take the time to build out role level security a single time, and role level security then applies to everything inside of the data mart, and to the uh, to the data set that you get with, or you know that you get with your your Power BI uh, data mart. So it's fantastic, and because it's software as a service, there's low management and there's low effort for you to to. Um, have to manage the platform itself. That's all handled by Microsoft. All you have to do is manage the data going in and manage the data coming out and, and telling those great stories, okay? Super, super powerful and useful, right? If you're at an enterprise level and if you're is sitting in uh, architecture space, why the heck are you working, looking forward to and glad to have Power BI data sets at your disposal? Well, this has very low to no costs your organization. If you have already have Power BI Premium or you're using PPU, Premium Per User Licensing, there's no additional cost. You can spin these up, use them as you want. Um, you know, the, the impact upon your service is very low. You have some, you know, if you're to spin up thousands of these things, you might run into some problems uh, that you have to manage. But relatively speaking, uh, compared to deploying a data mart with data sets that sit on top of it versus just deploying hundreds of data sets, that mart is much lower in the consumption costs, okay? This also moves a ton of the small efforts that you're normally asked to do outside that enterprise space and out to teams who are fully capable of delivering those things, right? So those pieces that allows you to focus in on the high value work that you know you need to do for your company, like your client 360 project, right? The to bring in the full view of your clients. Uh, and make that broadly available to your organization. That's a huge effort, it takes tons of time and energy. Folk, if you're in an enterprise area, focus on those types of things. Allow the teams to do the work that, that it's most suited for them, right? Um, this also works as a great source to understand and build out a citizen data engineering uh, pipeline for new resources. Gartner says the best place to find data engineers is within your organization. By implementing and rolling out Power BI Data Marts, you're gonna be able to find out who are all the real hot shots who, who, who don't just talk the talk in data, but are able to actually walk the walk and may wanna have a career working inside of a data team. So it's excellent uh, for that. It's also running fully on a SQL Server, I think it's Elastic Pool. So um, I forget the, the version it's on and it's probably changes. Um, but it's 100% SQL Server, you know, it's tooling that's been out there for, you know, 
decades is is the back end for this. This is really just a a nice uh, GUI front end to make it real easy for business users to interact with and work with. Uh, it's got limited capabilities, so they can't shoot themselves in the foot too terribly. Um, so it, it it's really fantastic. And the reliability of the platform has gone uh, through the roof when it, since it first launched and to now. It's just, it's super amazing, super dependable. Highly recommend it. All right. Now, we talk about the architecture. Let's take a step back and... Because uh, most of you will be familiar with the Microsoft Business Intelligence architecture. That was comprised of SQL Server integration services, which allowed you to take data, extract it from a variety of different sources, transform it, and then load it into another database, right? And that database being SQL Server, right? So you'd be able to load it into SQL Server, uh, and in SQL Server, you'd be able to manage it, create your views, run queries, do store procs, all of that good stuff, right? Um, from there, you'd, you'd move that from your uh, from your data mart into your OLAP uh, space, your a online analytical processing uh, service, which is analysis services. Uh, you'd, you'd stand up your tabular models, and you, from there, you know, once that data was in memory, it'd make it so it's really easy for people to consume that on a report layer without having to wait for queries to execute and all that stuff against the database, which could be very time consuming, right? And then you had those reports that sat on the front end and, and pulled from mostly from analysis services, but they could even hit that database too if need be, right? Well, as Microsoft started to modernize their data stack, they said, okay, hey, this stuff is really great. And, you know, the reporting was really uh, SSRS, if you remember that, but that icon sucks, so I use Power BI. <laughs> um, but as they started to modernize it, they said, you know, what's the space that needs the most help? And... Um, uh, you know, if you remember before tabular uh, models, there was the old MDX models, uh, multi-dimensional models that were really hard to work with. Uh, people really struggled to work in that space. And, um, you know, when they moved to tabular models, it became much easier to work with it. But they still needed a, a, a nicer front end to engage and build that content. Well, they started that journey 10-ish years ago when Power Query got put into Excel and we had Power Pivot inside there. Uh, that was basically just analysis services uh, running in Excel, right? And so uh, when Power BI came out, it brought that together, that data set, that tabular analysis services data set integrated inside of the Power BI reports that you'd build out. And you're able to, we were able to work and build Power BI reports with just those pieces of the infrastructure. That worked really great until it got to the point where people were saying, hey, you know, I got all these different reports out there out in the service, I've got all these different data sets that are available, but I've got my customer customer dimension. And my customer dimension's in these, you know, 15 different data sets, and it's, it takes a lot to refresh all of those, and it's it's really causing a problem to my you know, backend system, loading it all into the, the, the cloud. How can I solve that? Well, that's when Microsoft came out with data flows, right? Allowed you to load the data one time out, out of you know, your, your source systems that were on-prem, uh, or wherever, whatever cloud resources you had, out into a data flow that would then be consumed by data sets and visible inside reports. Really streamlined operations, made it much easier for uh, citizen data engineers to stand up entities for people to use inside their reporting. And hey, things are pretty good. But a challenge arose in that, okay, this is all good, but the only way you could access the, the data flows was through a tabular engine. So you had to know uh, how to write, uh, you know, we're back to that MDX language again, if you wanted to write a lot of the queries that, you know, some people wanted to do against the tables that they were adding into their data flows. Well, I mean, that's okay for some people, but remember, SQL's been around for like 48 years. There's tens of thousands, if not millions of people that know how to work with SQL. And so, we were really missing a, 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 there was really this hole inside the solution, and that's where DataMarts comes in. DataMarts allows you to take that information that you loaded inside your data flows, load it into tables inside of your DataMart, run queries against it, automatically generate a data set that has role level security, that you can apply role level security to at one time, and that work, actually, and this is one of the coolest unique features of the solution, is that role of security that you define inside of that, that data model 
applies to your, your database as well. So it's a, it is far better uh, in that regard than any other solution out there because you could define your role of security once and it just is there, okay? And then it's, uh, you know, that data mart is available easily accessible broadly across all of, all of these different cloud assets, you know, data flows to data marts to data sets to reports. Ah, oh, it's fantastic, all right? But yes, hang on, Chris, I, I don't want all this shadow IT. What's going on with data marts? Well, you know, that's where, hold on. That's where we start to get into how, where is the appropriate flow of information when you're using a data mart, okay? Now, we're gonna be using data flows that are gonna be populating our data marts, but where does that that information come from before uh, bef before we get it? Well, primarily you're gonna to wanna to source this from your, your, your data warehouse. So it goes from data warehouse into your data mart uh, for consumption and analytics. This allows you to curate down the data that goes in there, add additional business logic, that type of a thing, right? If you look at the uh, Kimball model uh, for, and for managing data, you know, they call out this pattern for how you'd use the data mart to uh, leverage, uh, leverage the data that's in the data warehouse while adding in your special business flavor. But the great thing about data marts is it allows you to easily add in a, a way to like load in Excel files that you can do queries against. I mean, who the heck doesn't want to run a query against some of these awful Excel files you get emailed? Data marts is a fantastic solution for that. What about, you know, just random CSVs that are all out on OneDrive? Heck, anything, any Excel, CSVs, whatever you have that you get loaded in, into OneDrive and easily access inside your data mart. That's inclusive of like SharePoint lists or even that dreaded access database. Uh, you can bring that in, you can start to load that to, and get it off of that on-prem or even just out of that access database and get it into something that's more modern so that you can do reporting and analytics on it. Or, and this is a big one, how about your power apps into Dataverse and then into your, your, your data marts? Oh, that, will, that allows you to mash up your data warehouse information against the information that's going into your power apps you do it with SQL, you can do it with your and you know your analytics data sets, and you can present that out into reports for your users. It's it is ah, it is absolutely fantastic. All right. All right. That's that's the overview of all the different things that are inside of Data Marts. Let's head in and check out Data Marts. So when I log into Power BI, I'm gonna head over to my workspaces. I like to think of my workspaces as servers or instances and how I group and manage content. So I wanna keep like with like. So data marts, I wanna keep all my data mart content together in one space. So I created a workspace just for my data mart. As you can kind of see here, here is my data mart, okay? So I click on data mart. I can see inside of my data mart here, I've got all my assets that you, that you know, would come from having built out a data mart. So as I go and look, you can kind of see that I've got a whole bunch of um, data flows in there and I've got a data set. So all of these are data flows right here. And we've got a data set, which you're accustomed to seeing. But right here, something brand spanking new. There's my data mark. Well, let's take a look once we go in. Well, before we go in, uh, we have a couple different things. We can hit refresh now. This What this will do is it'll recache and bring everything back into the data mart. Um, we can you know, schedule a refresh and we can go into settings. And we can do all your basic stuff. But if I go into my Kratos uh, data mart, I can get in and I could see the different tables that exist inside my data mart. Um, so I can go in and I could just look at these items. I've got all of the stuff right here. The nice thing is I can go into either my query page um, which allows me to write queries or I can go in and look at queries that I have saved inside of my data mart, right? So this query, all it does is it's creating uh, my customer order sales query, right? So I've given it a name. This is available to everyone on my team because this is one that we like and use all the time. It brings together all of the different um, sales order information that we need. I just click on run. I can run this information. I can get this, I can pull it out, right? I can, once this information clicks, uh, I can click on open in Excel. Excel is gonna open up. Right, see Excel pop up. I'm gonna click on enable editing. It's gonna run the exact same query. 
or it's gonna ask me if I wanna run this. I say, yes, run. It's gonna ask me to sign in, currently signed in, connect. And just like that, boom, all my information's in Excel. So super easy to get in. As you can see, just a couple of clicks of a button, right? Now I can go in, I can also see the data model that has been created, right? So I've got a data model that just automatically gets created. I don't have to do anything, it's right here. Now, if I'm pulling from a star schema, hey, awesome. All this stuff is gonna be set the way I want it to do. But if I wanted, I could do different things. Like I could go in here and manage roles. The nice thing is if I add a role in here, this is truly unique. This role right here will apply role level security, not just to the data set, but to the data, uh, the SQL database itself. It's absolutely fantastic. It's, it's just brilliant, all right? So I can create new measures. I can click on create new report. This will create a new web report that's based upon this model. Um, uh, really, it's th this is fantastic. And this is our first look at what it's gonna be like in many ways to start modeling information inside of the Power BI service. So it's a, a fantastic uh, opportunity. Let's go back to our, our workspace. From here, I can also go under settings and I can actually go in and get all sorts of a different uh, additional information about the gateway, the servers, uh, data source credentials, all that sort of stuff is in here. Um, you know, just as we kind of expect with this stuff. All right. So, you know, these are basically some of the things that are available inside of your data set. Great way to bring data together and make it available inside your org. All right. What's next? Okay, so I've got a whole bunch of um, uh, series of YouTube videos that we're gonna be laying out where we actually run through the details of creating a Power BI data mart, what admin things have to be there, um, what the process is, you'll see how easy it is. We'll then go through and another video will create a, vi we'll create a data flow and then we'll bring that, that flow into a data mart so you can see how that can, you, you would exist and you keep both those together show you how you actually build out one of those queries I was just going through. We'll then show you how to use the data set and uh, that's inside of the Power BI data mart. We'll also show you how to leverage and build out your own custom Power BI data set. That's exciting. Um, connecting the Power BI data set to Excel, you got kind of a preview of that here, but we'll go into more depth of that in a separate video. And then uh, like, how do you even open your, your data mart up in SSMS? Uh, super easy. And then how do you actually validate all this stuff that's going in there? So uh, really excited about what we have keep, uh, what we have coming up for you. All right, thank you guys so much for tuning in, watching the channel. Hope you got something from it. Hope this was useful for you. If you do, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, share this with your friends, family, loved ones, have your dog watch it, you know, um, whatever you got, you know, it really helps the channel. I really appreciate when you do. And uh, if you're looking to support that channel, head over, head over to creatorsbi.com, buy me a coffee. And uh, I've got some brand new uh, holograph stickers that uh, just showed up the other day. I will send those out uh, as, as my way of thanking you uh, for, uh, for supporting the channel and being part of our crew. So thank you guys so very much. You have an absolutely fabulous day. Peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.